Next up, we have Florida defensive tackle Tadero Soyton Jr., who, you know, he's a pretty polarizing prospect from what I've seen. On the Draft Network, for example, they had him in their top 100 prospects. CBS Sports had him in their top 150, whereas PFF, they have him ranked 244, I believe, out of 300. So, you know, a radically polarizing guy that I just wanted to, you know, being that I'm doing a batch of 10 defensive tackles, I kind of wanted to dig my teeth in and really see where I fell on him and ultimately who I sort of agreed with more in that regard. First thing first, then, in terms of his sort of statistical production, as well as just his, his general background, I think the most important thing that we can get from this slide at all is just the experience that he's had at Florida in terms of having played in 38 games, right? He started as more of a rotational guy, became a starter, and has really found and crafted himself a role there. And no, maybe he's not been the most productive guy in terms of you know, all five, six sacks a year, but he's certainly still making plays. You can see that in the tackles. You can see that on film. But, you know, what I think sort of sets him apart in that regard is that you haven't necessarily seen that from a lot of other prospects, right? You've seen guys, Tyler Shelvin, for example, who I just did in my last video. If you haven't seen that, click the link above my head. But you know, he's only played in 17 college games since high school. So there's a lot more question marks, I feel like, just in terms of what you're getting especially when you're looking at investing a second, third, fourth round pick into that guy, when you could potentially get a guy with 38 games under his belt, who, you know, I think you, for the most part, know what you're getting in maybe the fourth, fifth or sixth round later on, if that makes sense. I think that's to me sort of the best part about Slayton is that you're getting a guy who's further along in the process and maybe has a higher floor in that regard compared to some of the other guys that, that you just don't have enough film on them to really dig in and make a great evaluation of yet, if that makes sense. With that being said, though, obviously experience can only take you so far. I think that is a benefit to drafting out to Daryl, but at the end of the day, it comes down to just what you're able to do on the football field. And I think that's where Tadero falls a little bit shorter than uh, really all the other defensive tackles that we've that we've looked at to this point in terms of his ability to anchor and just his strength at the point of attack. You know, for a guy that's 330 pounds now, supposedly played anywhere up to 360 previously. I just didn't see see him anchoring nearly as well as I would have liked. You know, he was taking on more double teams than some of the other guys that we've watched, but he also wasn't taking them on well compared to some of the guys we've watched, if that makes sense. I feel like a lot of times teams were able to, you know, even if it was just with one blocker, reestablish the line of scrimmage in their favor by driving Tadero off the ball and really just creating unnecessary openings for for opposing running backs that we maybe didn't see with other other guys of his size, like say a Tyler Shelvin or Owen McNeil, right? I don't think that he's to that standard, nor do I think he's even to the standard of say a Christian Barmore or Marvin Marvin Wilson, guys like that, that we've also done to this point. I just think he falls short overall in that regard, considering his size. As a pass rusher then, I thought that there were flashes, right? I didn't think that he was necessarily terrible here. You know, a guy like Tyler Shelvin, for example, offered nothing as a pass rusher. I think that Tadero does to an extent. I thought that you'd see you'd see a nice burst every now and then. It just wasn't quite as consistent as I would have liked to get him into that 10, 11, 12, 13 range there. As you can see, I gave him a 9.5. I think that one benefit, though, to drafting him later in the draft this year is that you're definitely not going to have him on the field for every down, right? Whereas Florida, for the most part, did. He was playing the majority of their snaps. So will that sort of increase rest time and, you know, him only playing maybe a quarter of the snaps at the next level? Will him being a rotational piece at the next level lead to more production than we maybe saw with him playing on a down-in, down-out basis? It definitely could. I, I think at that point, you're really just hoping to, um, you know, make those splashes that you saw become more of a regular occurrence. I don't know if I would bet on that, but I think it's certainly poss possible uh, if your team does draft to there. In terms of his block shedding, and really just ability to uh, recognize blocks and, and play off of them. I thought that he didn't do a very good job in all honesty. I was hoping that, you know, out of a lot of the other bigger guys we've seen, say Aleem or say Shelvin, they do a good job of stabbing their hands and then playing off, off of that, creating that separation. He not only wasn't able to often create that separation, but even when he was, it just wasn't to the extent that, he was able to really shed and make a ton of plays, right? And, and that kind of disappointed me a little bit, having seen those uh, those pretty high tackle numbers. And I just thought that that would have translated a little bit better on film than it did. That's definitely something you can work on, though, right? You can teach the technique. The only question is now, after playing 38 games, you know, how much is there more for him to learn? Has he already been taught it and he just wasn't able to really execute it, right? And that's, that's what it's all about at the NFL, execution. And I think there's where 
Uh, Tadero falls a little bit short overall. I think good size. You can't really teach his size. Uh, 6'4", 330. That's solid, especially if you want him as sort of a one technique. Maybe not a nose. I don't think he has the strength to be a nose, but I think that he has he has the size to be a one technique in a 4'3", for sure, especially when you can kind of uh, play into those potential explosive plays as a one gap penetrator. Hopefully, I think that's what you're what you're kind of banking on if you do draft him. But but no, overall comes out to a 60, which as you'll see, is the lowest graded player that I've done at this point. But that goes without saying that I'm only grading 10 defensive tackles, right? If there's 20 that are going to be drafted, there's no chance that he's in the bottom echelon of those guys. I think that he's in the bottom echelon of this sort of this sort of top group. Uh, that I've done to this point. I'm, I'm not convinced that he'll be the lowest player on my big board by the end of this. Obviously, I'll only be finishing around 100 players, but I still think that he he has a spot in the league uh, regardless. I think that, you know, Mike and I have talked about in previous videos, at that point, you know, once you get so late into the draft, it does kind of become less about necessarily taking, oh, the best player available, but more so about filling, filling team needs and kind of filling out your depth chart. So, you know, if you're a team who who is short on the defensive tackle rotation and you want somebody who could maybe be a, a one technique on pass rushing downs as a rotational guy, then, hey, you could maybe play him as a three technique sometimes uh, against the run as well as, you know, just another body to toss in there and keep your main your main starters fresh. I, I definitely don't don't hate Tadero in that regard. I think he has the he has the physique and, and the physical upside that you could you could craft him a little bit into what you're looking for. And I do think that he could be become a solid rotational piece, no question. I'm not sure if he's ever going to become uh, a team's every down starter. I think that he does have the the versatility though in terms of you know he could be a one here, he could be a three there, he could be a four technique there. Um, I think that he has that sort of versatility that he'll find himself in the league for for a couple of years here. It's just a question of how effective is he actually going to be uh, once, once we get on the field. So, you know, a lot of people might see this and think I hate on this guy or anything. No, I'll hate on if your team uh, drafts him in the second or third round, you know, if he's a day two pick, then I'm going to start, then I'm going to start questioning what's going on. But no, if you take him even in the late fourth, uh, you know, into the fifth and sixth round, I, I think some value could be had there, but it's just going to be a question of, can they take that talent, improve upon it? Can they take that potential? And, uh, have him cultivated and kind of match those two together and and see what see what the final product is that Tadero has to offer. But with that being said, if you want to see the final product that Mike Dup has to offer, make sure you guys subscribe. Make sure you guys are liking, commenting on all these videos. Obviously, uh, if you're a, a Florida fan, if your team drafted Tadero and you're coming back to this video uh, in a month from now when the draft happens, tell me what are your thoughts on the selection? Should he have been rated higher, or lower, uh, etc.? Just let me know any any feedback, criticism, anything down below in the comment section. And with that being said, I think I, I think I'm mic'd up and now I'm mic'ing out. Peace guys.